Hey everybody, it's Lo and welcome back to my channel, Lo Without Limits. Today's video is all about your abs and some exercises that you can do anywhere. So if you wanna see that, then just keep watching. Today's video is all about some ab exercises that you can incorporate into your workout routine, whether you're still working out at home. If you are going to the gym, I know that a lot of them are still closed. All of the gyms in California are still closed. So I'm still doing some home workouts and one of the easiest things to do at home and doesn't require any equipment at all is your abs. So for this, I'm going to show you some different ab exercises for your upper abs, your lower abs, as well as your obliques. And I'm not saying to go do all of these exercises all at once, that would probably destroy your abs. But what you can do is pick your favorite from the upper ab exercises, one from the lower ab exercises, and then one from the oblique exercises, and then do just those three exercises as a circuit, like 15 to 20 reps for three rounds, or the first one three times in a row, and then the second one, and then the third. So however you wanna incorporate that, I'm just going to give you some different ideas that you can use for the different sections of your core. Before I jump into it, I just want to say that a lot of people are always wondering about abs and what's hard about the abs is that you can work them out and develop them as much as you want. Like you can have a nice strong core, some nice developed abs underneath, but if you're not eating well, then you're also going to have a layer of fat and just a thicker layer covering that up and making it hard to see them. So if you do have good abs, if you do have a strong core and you are working it out a lot, but you're not seeing anything, then maybe look at your diet if you want to be able to see the abs that you're working so hard at building. If you're gonna eat, you're gonna drink, you're gonna live your life, you're not just gonna not eat anything. So you will get a little bloated. So a lot of people, myself included, especially myself, I feel like I work out my abs a lot, but I always kind of have a little something on like my lower abs. It's never fully flat. And it's not because I have a bunch of weight there. It's not because I'm not working out that part of my abs, but it's because maybe I'm just bloated. And for men and women, that can be based on something that you ate. If you just ate something, like right now, I'm feeling a little bloated because I'm digesting. I just had breakfast like 30 minutes ago. Definitely changes based on what you've eaten, especially if you've eaten something that maybe you have an intolerance to and it's just not sitting right in your stomach. And then for women, especially if it's that time of the month or any part of your cycle, our bodies and our hormones are changing all the time. So don't be mad at yourself and be disappointed in yourself and say that everything that you're doing isn't working because you see a little pooch on the bottom. It could easily just be because you're about to start your period and like you're getting bloated. So definitely don't feel discouraged by that. So def just check your diet and then just go from there. But just because you may feel like, oh, like I have a little pooch or whatever, don't let that stop you from training your abs. Just keep working forward and then when you can get back into the gym, do all the other stuff, do a nice cable crunch, which I miss so, so much. But all these exercises I'm going to show right now need absolutely no equipment and you can do these absolutely anywhere. They're super simple. Let's jump right into it. We are going to start off with the lower abs. The very first lower ab exercise I'm going to show you are butterfly kicks. So you're gonna lay down on your mat wherever you are. For these, I personally find it easier to have my hands planted on the ground and a little bit under my bum because then it makes sure that my butt's not lifting because you don't want your hips to really do all the exercise. You want the lower abs to feel it the most. So I kind of keep myself super stable by putting my hands a little bit underneath myself. I'm going to extend your legs and start off with a little bit of a hover. I have my toes pointed and you can't really see it in frame. And then butterfly kicks. And this one, since they are a smaller move, you can even do a little bit bigger if you wanted to. But this one, you can just do for 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, or as long as you can, like as many reps as possible. And you wanna make sure that you're not going from the hips again and that you feel it in your lower core. The next one is going to be some in outs and then I'm also going to show you in outs with a twist. That way you can get a little bit more oblique action in there, get a little bit more of a challenge if you are feeling up for it. You can start off doing in outs with your hands on the ground and your toes up. In yoga they'll call it high boat to low boat. But if you already have a little bit of core strength, you want a bit more of a challenge, raise your hands a little bit. In there. And remember you're pulling 
from your lower abs. And then when you're down, you wanna make sure you have your mid back hit the ground, that way you get that full rep in. With a twist, get your water bottle or whatever you have that's nice and skinny, that way you won't knock it over. And this just provides a bit more of a challenge and gets some oblique workout in there as well. And make sure you bring your knees as high as you can. The next one for your lower abs, and again, a little bit more of a challenge than the in-outs or the in-outs with twist are the around the world. So similar thing, but instead of bringing your legs in all the way, you will go around whatever barrier, whatever little thing you have here. Instead of going all the way there, You're just kind of going around town, around town. And now the very last one for your lower abs are going to be single leg leg raises. So everybody knows the ones where you lift your leg up. Now, if you want a bit more of a challenge, do one at a time. The biggest challenge for me here is not only the move being a bit more difficult than the leg raise, but the counting can remember which leg just went. So maybe you guys will have better luck with it. So again, hands down. I like to support myself by putting them a bit underneath my bum. Starting out straight, a little hovered. And you go one up, second one follows. That one down, second one follows. Opposite one up, follow. That one goes down, follow. So hopefully you have better luck with remembering what leg just went what, because that is where I struggle. Well, feel it here. And again, make sure you're getting that feeling here in your lower abs versus in your hips or in your lower back. Just try a different movement until you do have a bit more strength to do that one. And now for the second part, I'm going to move on to obliques. So I'm gonna give you a handful of oblique exercises. And again, just choose your favorite. My absolute favorite oblique exercise is the heel touches. It's so easy. It will mess up your hair. So maybe it's one that you stick to doing at home, but it's so easy. And if you're doing it right and you're doing it controlled and you're really putting that mind muscle connection together and feeling it in your obliques, then it is a great, great exercise. And I think anybody can do this one. Hands on the ground, just next to your hips. And you want to do basically like a side crunch until your fingers can touch your heel. And try not to lift your back off the ground because you don't want this to become a shoulder back exercise. You really want all of the movement to be coming from your obliques. The next one is pretty simple. It is just a side plank, which is really, really good for your obliques. But then to push that a little bit further, I'm going to show you some different versions of the side plank that you can do to really, really challenge yourself if just a side plank is feeling a little bit boring. So. First things first, the simple side plank. I like to start on my forearm, especially if you need a bit more control, a bit more balance. Have your feet stacked over here at the end. Have a little, little help here. You can push yourself up using your top hand and just hold that. And this one, again, because you're not doing any reps, you can just do for 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And just repeat. On the other side, you want a nice balanced core, you know? Make sure you're really pulling yourself. Imagine you have like a string on your hip that's pulling your hips up to really get that like little crunch in and engage that part of your body. All right, so that is the side plank. And if you want to get a bit more strength, the side plank is feeling super easy for you. Here are a few that you can really challenge yourself with. Side plank dips. So the exact same thing, you're on your forearm, have your hip up towards the sky, and you're just gonna dip. So then the bottom hip is just gonna like gently touch the mat. You don't wanna like land here because then it's like you're taking a rest. Just do a gentle touching. 
Hello, Matt. How are you? Now you're thinking side plank dips, easy. Now let's do a side plank crunch. It's a similar movement for the obliques as the heel touches, but again, a bit more of a challenging, requires a lot more stabilization, and that stabilization is not only working your obliques for the actual exercise, but just your whole core in general. It's toasty in here. All right, so for this one, you're gonna have forearm down again, feet stacked again, top arm you're gonna point out, and you're just gonna crunch. You can also, if you struggle with balance or if you just want to take it slow, you're new to working out your obliques, you can do that similar side crunch motion by standing up. So you'll one leg's out, the other one's your arms up. And you just kind of do like a standing crunch. The next one is thread the needle. So I know you might be thinking, oh, thread the needle, like yoga. It's one of my favorite yoga moves. It is that nice, nice upper body stretch when you thread the needle. It is so good. But this one, for your obliques, it doesn't feel that good as you do it. Forearm down, feet stacked. This one, because I struggle with balance, I don't have my feet stacked right on top of each other like I do for all the other side plank exercises and variations. I kind of put my top one a little bit in front just to really help me out with balance. So you can do that too if you need to. It's not going to ruin the exercise at all. But you're starting up. up. Top arm is pointing up and you're threading the needle like you're gonna hug yourself and then you go back and then you give yourself a hug and you're gonna go back and then you're gonna give yourself a hug again and that's what it's all about it's all about self love man and you really want to be turning from the oblique too so make sure you're not like just doing a full body rotation you really want that movement coming from here. And lastly, and my little camera just died, so you will not be getting that better angle for this one, but it's the Russian twist. So similar to the boat pose, you're gonna have your feet off the ground, arms together. If you really wanna challenge, get a weight or something, but again, this is like a weight-free, no equipment needed ab exercise, but feet up and twist, and again, Remember to twist from the obliques and not from the hips. You don't want your legs swinging about. If it helps, you can cross your ankles and twist. If you have like a medicine ball, then you can do like, you pick up on one side, put down on the other, but again, no equipment. And that is it for obliques. One more section. When it comes to upper abs, there are really two main exercises for it, the crunch and the sit-up. So these sit-ups, I personally think are just best, like way better than a crunch. And sit-ups are a bit more hard because you are curling up each and every vertebrae of your spine to get that full sit-up. So your feet might want to lift up off the ground. If you have an extra person, that's great. If you have something to hook them onto, that's great. Or else I notice that when I do do sit-ups, I kind of like start sliding down my mat. Something to really lock you in place is nice. And for the sit-ups, you're gonna go every single vertebrae. Again, don't like lead with your neck or anything. You don't wanna cause any neck strain. So just every single vertebrae from your top to the bottom and then slowly back down. And it is more challenging for any exercise to go slow and controlled, but is that slow and controlled aspect of it that will really get you the best for it. Up, 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 and down, 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 down. Up, 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 and down, 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 down. If you want more of a challenge and you do have equipment available or you are at the gym, instead of just doing these on the floor, you can have a weight in your hands and raise that above your head as you do the sit up or you can do it on a decline bench where you get to lock your feet in and go up. It's a lot more challenging, but if that is available to you and it's something that you want to do, then I definitely recommend it because there isn't really any other way to make the sit up harder besides just going slower and more controlled. So again, up, 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 
there. No, down, 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 down. And now for the sit-ups cousin, the crunch. So again, with the crunch, you don't want to be going with your head because then you're just working out your neck, you're causing more neck strain. Again, don't want that. You really want to just lift up from your shoulders so where your shoulder blades end. They should be nice on the ground. You can cross yourself here, have your hands here, whatever you really want to do. But again, try not to pull on your neck at all. Do this and then lift up just so your shoulder blades are off the ground and down. So it is a smaller range of motion and it will focus more on the upper abs than the sit up, but the sit up is just really great because of that full range of motion. And when you're down, you might feel your stomach just kind of expand, rest a little bit, and then you feel that tightness right between your ribs when you're at the top of it. So really take that in, both the top and the bottom. And again, just don't rush through it. So you'll feel the contraction all right here, and then you'll release it. Because if you are just rushing through it and doing a hundred million abs like this, yes, you are getting a lot done and it might feel like you're getting a lot done because it's so tiring because you're going so intense but you're not really feeling the contraction, the expansion of the muscles that will truly help you develop your abs and also just get you more in tune with your body and in tune with the muscles. So when you do get back into the gym and you're doing squats and deadlift, you wanna be able to feel your core and really brace yourself. And by taking movements nice and slow and controlled, you can really get a sense of just your body in general and what it can do. Now, if you wanna do crunches, but give yourself a little challenge, you can just lift your legs up to where they're a tabletop and do some tabletop crunches. And this way you're also feeling it in the lower abs as you're working out the upper abs because just having to keep your legs balanced and upright here, again, you can cross them if it helps you at all, not swing them around. But by keeping your legs up, you're really engaging the lower part of your abs. And if just doing tabletop crunches seems a bit too easy or you just want to challenge yourself a little bit more, you can do V crunches. So these ones I struggle with a little bit more because I'm just not that strong yet, but put your legs straight up, put your arms straight up. And again, you're only just going to lift up your shoulder blades since it's just a crunch. Well, there you have it. Those are some of the best and my favorite exercises that you can do for your upper abs, your lower abs, and your obliques. Again, you don't need to do them all as your workout. Just pick one from each category and do three sets of that. Do a little circuit with them. Just choose your favorites and you can make them as challenging or as easy as you want with the different variations just with your body weight. They don't require any equipment, so you can still do them at home since everything's still closed. And when the gyms do open, you can do them at gyms. When you travel, you can do them in your hotel room. They're really, really easy to do absolutely anywhere. So I hope you like this video. Be sure to follow me on Instagram as well. I post some of my workouts that I do there instead of just on a YouTube video every once in a while. So definitely follow me there. It's also at low without limits. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment down below what your favorite ab exercises are and what you want to see more of on my channel. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe. I upload a new video every Wednesday. So until the next one, thanks for watching.